Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we ask you, answer your questions about your life and your money. That's right, baby. We're going to talk about you right in front of you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Carlos starts <laughs> this hour in San Francisco. Hey, Carlos, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Thanks for taking my call. Sure, man. What's this up? exciting. Uh, first time calling. I have a, a question. Uh, my wife and I have been saving for a while. We have 20% down for uh, a house here in the Bay Area. Which, Whoa, you, know, you got a pile of money. I know, that's right. Pretty much it's 1.5 or above. Uh, we also have a year's worth of emergency fund, uh, you know, if, if I was to uh, not be able to work for a couple of months or whatever. I am the only uh, the only income in the household. Uh, my wife stays at home, and uh, it's just confusing. It's a little scary. I mean, we do... We have prepared for it, but it's still it's a large amount of money that the homes are going for out here. So, oh yeah, um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to kind of hear your your guys' advice. I mean, we've done everything that you have uh, asked of us with the uh, baby steps, no debt, um, two two daughters, two and under, and uh, we you know we just uh, we rent currently. Our rent is pretty pretty okay. My work uh, pays for a chunk of my rent, so it's even better. Cool. Um, but we want to grow our family as well, and or we want to continue growing our family. But uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. kind of. How old are you? Thirty three. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a PG and E lineman. A what? A lineman. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, electric lines. Cool. Build yeah. Construction. Yeah, you're making bank. Sort of you're stuff. working your butt off, and you're making mm-hmm. bank. Yeah. You said you already have twenty percent saved. Yeah, I work a lot of hours because my job, it, it's just the work is there. It's just depending how much time am I willing to trade in for money. Yep. That's all it comes down to. And, and that's on top of the, the that's on top of the year's worth of expenses you have saved too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, we don't have any debt. I mean, obviously we have our rent. Uh, our rent currently is 31 In your right? line of work, if you're not respectful of risk, careful about risk, you die. Correct. And so your nature is to apply that formula to everything else. And so That's correct. You're, you, you, you know, it's okay at work, but you're probably overanalyzing buying a house, dude. I, I think so. You're not going to die from it, okay? So, I mean, you've done everything right. You've laid the foundation. You've got the money. You've done a really good job. You've prepped the job site, so to speak. Okay? Yes. And so I, there's nothing that you said that gives me a tilt. Me neither. I wanted to ask you what's stopping you. Is there something else going on that we don't know about that's stopping you from pulling the trigger? Uh, no. I mean, the only thing is my wife and I are, you know, I'm pretty pretty confident about the amount of work that is, that is here. Um, every year that I've been here, I've made $100,000 or more mm. in the last and it's 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 never ending work really. Yep. Um, the mm-hmm. only thing that is taxing is is the, the time that I'm away from home, and my wife is concerned that you know buying a house that's x amount of dollars would require me to continue being away from home, which it would be true for. Obviously, we try to get we're trying to get a 15 year mortgage, mm-hmm. and yeah, and our plan is to pay it off within five to seven years. Yeah. I think you're on track. You're okay. And you can dial back at any time, dial up at any time. You've got always got work. You've always got extra work. Mm-hmm. You're in good shape. You're fine. Uh, and, and, hey, if you do it for a while and you live in the house three or four years and you decide, oh, um, we're going to live somewhere else. Yeah. Sell the house. I mean, you're, you're going to be fine. It's not like you're going to have – you're sitting in a real estate bubble in freaking San Francisco. I mean, it's going to go up. He could it's also- always gone up. I mean, as long as I've been alive and I'm older than a dinosaur. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it has, you know, you're fine. You're going, you're sitting in a great market, uh, real estate wise. And, and you're going to, you know, you're going to have a great time, man. I, I think you're, I think it's normal to, if you've never done something before and you're in, and you're in a, a career field that causes you to analyze risk, you can get caught up in paralysis of the analysis. Sure. 
Ready, aim, 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 aim. Oh, pull the trigger. Yeah. You know, seriously. And so you, you, that's the thing. And that I can do it too. Anytime any of us can do that. If we get, if we're really careful, we're trying to be wise, we're trying mm-hmm. to be diligent, but you've never done it before. So you don't know what it feels like. And just to step off that diving board Look. that first time. Yeah, I felt like that when we bought our first house. But to his wife's point, if she feels like the amount of work that he's doing is not a normal or sustainable amount of work Mm -hmm. over the long haul, they could always pull the numbers back and say, well, what would it look like? This is more normal or this is what we're hoping for. And they could buy based on those numbers as opposed to the current numbers if they wanted that sort of margin. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean... You're 33. You you're gonna have you're gonna have more. You, there's gonna be another thing happening with your income yeah. later too, and yeah, you're, it's okay. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be just fine. So, folks, that's why we tell you to do a 15 year fixed where the payments no more than a fourth of your take home pay. So you've got some margin in your budget. You've mm-hmm. got what economists call disposable income left in your budget, which allows you to have extra investment. It allows you to have extra generosity. It allows you to have the margin to create a sustainable work pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you can go from that and say, okay, I'm going to dial it up for a little bit, knock this puppy out. Well, let me be the peanut gallery because I always hear people in the peanut gallery talking, Dave, 15 year, that's not going to give me more margin. That's going to make my monthly payment go up. No, it makes your monthly payment exactly the same. It's going to make the amount of house you buy go down. There it is. That's what it's going to be. So... You don't get the one with the jacuzzi, the skylight, and the racquetball court. You're 24. (laughs) Shut up. Okay? Seriously. That's what it is. It's all about lifestyle. That's right. I grew up in a thousand square foot house, one and a half baths. Mm -hmm. So don't talk to me about your needs. Mm -hmm. Okay? Seriously. Now, need would be a shelter. Right. Want would be a bigger shelter, <laughs> right? Right. A nicer shelter. <laughs> a shelter that does things for me automatically. Oh, man. That I would know, be that's a right. better shelter. <laughs> and all of those things are fine, but the mm-hmm. need is shelter. Yeah. Yeah. When we were, when I was, uh, you know, when the dinosaur, little baby dinosaurs were running around with me when I was a child, we were in this eighth grade. We had the civics class, they called it. And they taught us the difference between needs and needs. And Mm once food, shelter, clothing, transportation, and utilities are needs. Transportation, however, is a hoopty, (laughs) not a $65,000 F-150. So what you're saying is... That is is a want. And it is a valid want, but it is a want. HGTV doesn't determine what our needs Needs are. are. Yeah, they just determine what you're going to be discontented about. (laughs) Because you wish you were them, and they live in an edited world that's not a real world. I know, that's right. Kind of like your friends on, what do they call them? Influencers, yeah. Yeah. That's not real. It's not real. Help you. It's not real. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Today's question is sponsored by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly has top quality providers like Precision Door Service, Junk King, and more to help you take care of projects before the weather gets cold. So find the local help you need by downloading the Neighborly app today. 
Today's question comes from Krista in Maryland. She says, my husband and I have had separate accounts with a joint account for bills since we've been married. We recently started Baby Step 2 and purchased every dollar premium. I find that the app has been a game changer, but my husband finds it to cause too much conflict and feels too controlled with his spending, even though he has had to cut back. Okay. To help this, we have placed a budget item for fun money, a hundred dollars a month for each of us. This is still not enough and too controlling. How do I get through to him that bucking down for a short amount of time to pay off our debt is a good thing. Uh, We currently are 122,000 in debt besides our mortgage. And I feel suffocated by this amount. Whoo. This is a good one. Um, my guess is you guys have had separate money for a long time and he's kind of been able to go and do his thug thizzle and not had to answer to anybody. And now you have the same account and it sound. I'm just, I'm going off the words on the paper. It sounds like all of this so far has been your idea and you're getting every dollar and you're getting the family on a budget and you're going to put fun money in the category and you're going to check it. It doesn't sound like this is a joint effort yet. It kind of sounds like he's there like, all right, you know, and he's, you're kind of having to pull him along and drag him along. Yeah. You know why he feels controlled? Cause he is being controlled. Yeah. Not by the budget, but by you. Yeah. Cause he's not got a vote in the process or has not chosen to cast his vote. Mm-hmm. She said, well, here you can have a hundred dollars. Yeah. You're, and, you're not his mommy. Yeah. You're his wife. So, uh, yeah, you guys, he needs to sit down and say, okay, the two of us together have a high definition dream, a very clear picture of the future. Yep. And then we say, what must be true to get there? Mm -hmm. And then together we cast a vote on our money each month on how we can best get there while still surviving and having a reasonable life. Or in some cases, not even a reasonable life, but we chose together to not have one. You're Mm -hmm. trying to use the budget to whip him into shape. Yeah. Not going to work. The the budget is not a whipping post. Yeah, there's got to be a why behind it. It can't just be we're paying off debt just to pay off debt. For some people, that might work. But for most people, that's not going to work. There's got to be that bigger reason why. Yeah. Why why why? are you doing this? And see, he's not... He's like, okay, I'll go along. Yeah. Instead of like, okay, let's sit down, honey. Let's do this together. Yeah. You know, because... You know, like grown man can choose what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Grown woman can choose what they want to do with their money when you sit down and both of you have a vote. Yeah. And when you know what the prize is at the end of it, the stronger the why, the stronger the try. I'm going to increase the food, the fun money, even though I know it's going to delay the prize. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You both have a vote. Right. I mean, you can you can make an argument for that. And but the, the, the he feels controlled and it has nothing to do with every dollar. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's not every dollar didn't do it. <laughs> nope. Nope. Didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if you want to learn about every dollar and how to build that budget on that app with your spouse or as a single, either one, Jade Warshaw to my right and Rachel Cruz and George Camel are periodically doing free webinars at everydollar.com slash budgeting on how to build that out and use it. It's completely free. Did I mention it? It's free. Yeah. If you don't like it, we'll give you half your money back. It's free. Okay. So come on, check it out. They're, they're, you're doing several of these a month yeah. and uh, you can get signed up for one. Do you know when your next one is off the top of your head? I, I do not. It's in okay. November. We'll do two of them. And okay. just to clarify, the webinar is free and you can sign up for every dollar for free. They're, both sides of it is free. Uh, like free. Free indeed. It's a lot of free. Yeah. Everydollar.com slash budgeting. Betty is with us in Denver. Hi, Betty. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you for having me. Sure. How can we help? Um, I need to open up a new bank account, and I also need to have a new apartment. Both are requiring me to unlock the freeze on Experian. And when I went online today and went through the steps and put in my telephone number, they said that that telephone number was not recognized, and that's as far as I got. Okay. So I'm wondering I guess how you're gonna can have to I... I guess you're going to have to call them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could not find a telephone number. I tried to Google search on that, and I wasn't able to see a telephone number for Experian to talk to someone in customer service. They have a chat room or anything? I, I've never I, tried to. Un, I, I've tried, never tried to unfreeze mine. Uh, I I didn't see any kind of chat room service come up yeah. on anything online. By, I, no. I don't understand. I mean, I do understand an apartment check wanting to check your credit, and yours is frozen. Uh, but my my credit has been frozen at 
nothing on it. It says zero. It says I filed bankruptcy in 1988. But um, here's what I found. Okay. It says if you have an Experian account, you can unfreeze your credit by logging in, clicking on the help center, and then toggling the free status from unfrozen to scheduling a new to scheduling yeah, but a when she tried thaw. to log in, her, they, it didn't accept her login because it didn't like her phone number. Is that so right? So I wonder if you can... Is that what happened, Betty? Yeah. Lo- the login yeah. rejected yeah. you? Yeah. What yeah, if you do the it. forgot my password deal? Uh, I, I could try forgot my password. Try I, mean, that. I didn't even I didn't even go to forgot my password. Yeah, I, I would jump in. Did you get logged in? Uh, I, I, was, I was just starting to get logged in. Okay, yeah. And, um, and yeah, then, I think you, you need know, to get, see if you can get logged in. And, and if not, I would jump on, try to find one of the chat rooms. Back to what I was saying before uh, Jade so rudely interrupted me. No, I'm kidding. But the, uh, <laughs> with, the, with the actual answer to the question, which is problematic. But, yeah, but the, uh, the bank account should not give you trouble. I've never unfrozen mine. I've opened hundreds of bank accounts. But now see, a, credit, a, a, a certain apartment might want to pay your thing. But my, my account has not been unfrozen since they allowed you to freeze them some 20-something years ago. When yeah. they first came out with that law or that change in the service that they provide as a response to Congress breathing down their neck. But, yeah, yeah, that's uh, so I worried about your bank here a little bit. Like mm-hmm. they think they want to do some kind of uh, overdraft protection debt thing attached to your checking account. And that's why they want to check your credit instead of you just opening an account. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's very possible there. And, you know, I think you could just tell the uh you know, the uh, apartment complex, look, here's my job references, here's the down payment or the deposit, and you can't check my credit because it's frozen. The reason it's frozen is there's nothing on it, mm-hmm. and I don't allow, allow goobers like you to mess around on my credit bureau reports. So you want to rent me an apartment or not, otherwise I'm going to cross the street because there's 73 others that look just like you around here. So because uh, credit, I mean, really, the idea that <laughs> yeah. you pull a credit re- bureau report to rent an apartment is a little bit unusual. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, so yeah. But if you want to get it unfrozen, it sounds like you need to get a login process. Mm-hmm. I have not done it to answer your question, Betty, so I'm not sure. But but um, I mean, this is what it says on their site. So yeah. I think she just needs to go one step, like follow go, the steps through. Go in a little bit deeper yeah. and then, yeah, see if it won't, see if you can't get past the phone number thing. Mm-hmm. Edward is in New York City. Hi, Edward. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Uh, hello, Dave J. Good afternoon. How are you guys doing? How can we help? All right. Um, so basically, quick story. Married, you know, six years, two kids, uh, five and two. Um, no student loan debt, but we do find ourselves in about one hundred and fourteen thousand of consumer debt. Um, with our friend, I got in the house. Um, total take home roughly the month is about ninety six hundred. Um, I'm just trying to. Yeah, what's uh, what's out. the one hundred and ten, one hundred and fourteen without student loans? About you got big cars. Uh, what's the deal? It's it's. Two cars. Uh, one of them is about thirteen thousand. The other one's about twenty-three. Uh, two personal loans. Of one was a debt consolidation before we bought the house. Um, I basically we basically were debt-free when we sold the house. Uh, we paid everything off, and then little by little, everything crept up within the past three and a half years. So it's now it's just at a scary point that I'm going down a road that. I don't want to go down. Um, mm-hmm. We need a behavior to change. Out. Yeah, I think you've identified what the problem is. The cars aren't the problem. Thirty-six thousand out of one fourteen. You got something else going on here. It sounds like you guys have tried to borrow your way out of debt with these debt consolidation loans and didn't change your habits. So hang on, we'll set you up with every dollar and put you through Financial Peace University so you can get a game plan going to either start shedding yourself of stuff, certainly shedding yourself of lifestyle to get down under your income and start really turning this thing around. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. 
Hello is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personalities, my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Joni's with us in Jackson, New Hampshire. Hi, Joni. How are you? Well, as you say, better than I deserve. Much better. Good. How can we help today? Well, and my dad used to say, advice is worth what you pay for it. So that was fun to start the show off with that. Okay. So I, uh, my daughter's two 40-ish years old daughters and I co-own a cabin that's uh, across the road from my house where I, I've lived at this house for 40 years. And um, we bought the cabin five years ago. We we're all three on the deed. And as you said a few weeks ago, never go into business with anyone. One reason being that they will have different interests from you. And that's what we're facing. Um, I'd like to move from my home to the cabin, um, which needs some serious work to make it livable. Um, and my daughters, one of them wants to just do as little as possible and make it into a seasonal rental. And the other one wants that also, but she doesn't want me to have a home there because she can deny it uh, because we all have to agree since we're co-owners. Um, we all have to agree on work done there and about... 20 years ago, she was doing a bunch of bad stuff, and I had to, told her, if you keep this up, you're going to have to leave. So I had to kick her out of the house, and she wants to punish me for that. So, so the way you the way you handled that, that she, you have a daughter that wants to punish you, and you decide to buy a cabin with her. It, was, um, it wasn't. A, you bought the cabin choice. five years ago. 20 years ago, you kicked her out. Well, five years ago when the cabin came up for sale, um, the owner wanted to sell it to my daughters. And so they, on paper, bought it. I paid 200000 for it. Um, so I paid for the taxes and the purchase price and all of the repairs that we have done. Um, so they put no they money, in money in it? Excuse me? They put no money in Right. Oh gosh. And I bought my house. Do you got, years ago for and do you guys have any kind of written agreement on this at all? We have one agreement that they came up with that says we all have to agree on any work that's done. Did you sign that? Yes. Why? I why did you? I don't know. I don't know why you did any of this. If you had two hundred thousand dollars, buy the cabin. Don't buy the cabin. Why did you put them on here knowing that this is going to be that this one daughter is going to be a problem from day one? I didn't. I didn't know that, yeah. and the yeah, you seller did. would not sell it to me alone. She wanted to sell it to my daughters. Why? So I had no. I, I, we either wouldn't get the cabin, yeah. or the girls would both be on the deed. What, what was initially the use of the cabin when you first bought it? Did you buy it because you said, you know what, I'm going to move in here? And everybody knew that, or was the initial purpose of the cabin to rent it out to someone, someone else? It was me moving up. There was an option. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't talk about any plans. I started doing little bits here and there, having a cabin chinked, making sure the roof was good. 
Okay, um, uh, Joan, Joni, let me ask to, you this: How how old are you? I bought it to pro- I bought it to protect the value of my house, um, so that how, Joni. we're surrounded by national forest. Joni, and it's I bought my house for twenty eight nine thousand dollars. Joni, now it's worth a million. Joni, how old are you? Seventy. Seventy. Okay. You have made a mess. That's right. This is a mess. Okay. And you're really left with only a couple of options. Uh, One is to convince your daughters to deed the property over to you, given that they put no money in it to start with, and they have no rights to this morally or ethically. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is an absurd deal. You should not have done this deal. It was a dumb deal. It was a bad deal. You set yourself up to get punched in the nose. Now you're getting punched in the nose. So now the only thing you can do with this is you can convince them to deed it over to you, or you can hire an attorney and sue them and force the sale of the cabin and show the judge that they put zero dollars into this and that at least you get your 200000 back before there's anything split at the sale. Now, you get to decide. Are you, are you going to be able to convince them that you guys are all stupid? What you've done here is all stupid. You're not stupid, but what you've done is ridiculous. It's a horrible plan, and your daughters are horrible, that they took a third of this knowing that they didn't get along with their 70-year-old mother, and she paid 100% of it. That's kind of like being a thief, okay? That's kind of what that's like. So I don't really like your daughters Mm -hmm. much. And this is not going to be easy. And so I don't know that you're going to be able to convince these two dweebs to turn the thing over to you. And I'm afraid you're going to be faced with a judge to do it, or mm-hmm. you've just gotten screwed out of 200000 because you've lost control of this because you've got a two-to-one vote, and the deed doesn't have any restrictions on it whatsoever. You've got three people, and they have two of the votes. So, uh, But a judge can untangle this, and the, a judge can force the sale of the, of, of the cabin and give you $200,000 at the sale. One other option on the persuasion side you could do is you can offer the dweeb some money to go away. I'll give you $25,000 a piece if you've got it or whatever to sign the deed over oh, to me. Oh, gosh. Which is immoral, yeah. thievery, blackmail, whatever you want to call it. But you've, it's going to be cheaper than court. Mm-hmm. She's not going to like them much after that, though. Well, I don't like them, so it's easy to not like them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not likable. That's right. Who does this to their parents? Oh, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, you it's threw me good. out of the house 20 years ago. So the way I'm going to get back at you is I'm going to get you to pay full price for a cabin that I own one third of, and then I'm not going to let you do anything. Good God. Oh, this is terrible. What kind of four-year-old is this? Needs counseling. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, some people's children. But the, um, yeah, the, guys, you cannot enter into these things wide-eyed open and expect you know, a crocodile to do anything but bite your leg off. Crocodiles, it's what they do. I just can't understand that. I even even if they liked each other, right? It's what dumb. would be ever the purpose of going into something like it? It makes no sense. If she was going to move into it anyway, just buy the house for herself. Well, the guy wouldn't sell it to her, which is weird. Yeah, also, that's weird too. There's a lot of weird here, but yeah. Uh, Johnny, I'm sorry. I wish I had a magic wand to make your pain go away, but your pain is not a cabin. Your pain is your daughter's. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're going to have to deal with one way or another. Probably the cheapest way to do this is just buy the dweebs out and get them to sign it over. Just, you know, it's a dweeb fee. It's a stupid tax fee. Mm-hmm. And I do something stupid and it costs me money, Joni, I call it stupid tax. You're probably going to pay some stupid tax here. You are going to pay some stupid tax. And they, gonna, better, they better not gonna, ask for a third. You're going to pay a lawyer. Well, they'll ask for it. You know these dweebs oh, will. Gosh. So you're going to either pay a lawyer, you're going to pay the dweebs, or you're going to lose your 200000 mm-hmm. These are your three weight. But you're mm-hmm. going to lose money. You're going to lose money. Something, something's going on here. I'm paying uh, a lawyer. That, if, if it's me, I'm paying a lawyer. I don't, I don't want to fool with these girls anymore. Wow. It's your kids. They're dweebs. <laughs> <laughs> to quote a well-known philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's terrible. I feel bad. But, you know, I, I was doing a thing with some wealthy people the other day and they were all worried they were saying you know how do i raise my children when we have wealth and the wealth doesn't ruin them Hmm. and i told them i said the wealth won't ruin them 
It's just going to expose if you did. If you run them, the wealth's just going to give you that's the exposure to that. It's going to magnify. Because whatever goes on that's uh, in a family is, is magnified when it gets wealth. Wow. In other words, the crazy gets super crazy. Mm-hmm. Right? The, uh, but, I mean, this is all tied to, you know, $200,000 worth yeah. of thievery here. Oh, Joni, I am so sorry. Your heart must be broken. Mine's broken for you. I'm angry for you. Mm-hmm. I just can't do anything about it. Except ray all about it. Yep. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us. Jessica is with us in Salt Lake City. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hi. So I have a couple months left in Baby Step 3, but I'm just trying to decide what to prioritize after that because I really want to buy a house. But I also really want to catch up in my retirement savings. And I also really want to do grad school so that I can raise my income so that I could do both of those other things faster. Uh, Grad school in what? Uh, It's in education. So I'm a teacher. And if I get a grad school, then I get a pay bump. Oh, automatic. Yeah, it's built into the system. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long will it take you to complete grad school? About a year, maybe two years if I go slow. I'm going to be doing it online. Mm Mm-hmm. What's it cost? It costs four thousand per six months. So hopefully I'll keep it under ten thousand. Okay. Like if you did it in one year, and that'd be I'll eight. Get... If you did it in one year and a half, it'd be twelve, right? Right, right. Okay. All right. So and then I'm hoping that I can um I forgot what I was about to say. Are you single? Yes, I'm what, single what's your income? No kids. Uh, right now, it's fifty-seven thousand. Okay. All right, and, and the and, and so do we do we put twelve back. towards what, what's the pay bump on the uh, five, after you get your grad level done? It, it'll be about five or ten thousand. Okay, five or ten. Well, between because the salary schedules are a little bit different depending on how long you've been teaching. It's it's most of them are about seven thousand. Well, I mean, you know how long you've been teaching. How much pay bump will you get? Well, I don't know. I don't know next year's salary schedule, if that makes sense. It does not change five or $10,000 every year, though. I mean, what was it? What would it be if it was this year? It would be 7000 For you. Okay. All right. So you get your money back in a year and a half. And from mm-hmm. then on, you got an extra 7000 That's a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. And if that delays yeah. you buying a house a little bit, I'm cool with that. Okay. 
But that also makes but me want to get that also makes me want to get through school super fast. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah. And then do I contribute to retirement during that, or do I just go as fast as I can through that and then through through? Well, these? can can you cash flow school and do retirement? Yes. Well, let's do I that. would do that. Yeah, let's do that. And then if you want, okay. if you if you get out and you get your seven thousand bump and you want to start saving for a house, you want to turn off retirement for one year while you uh, save for a house or something, that'd be okay. But you could turn it on okay. for right now and, and get some started, right? Yes. Love it. But I think the trick is the faster you finish school, two things happen to the math. One is they're no longer charging you four grand every six months, and mm-hmm. that much faster you get 7000 In other words, you finish school in one year, it makes you an extra 7000 versus finishing it in two years. Right. Well, and it saves you another 8000 in tuition. Yes. So I'm doing this in a year. Okay. I mean, if I can figure out any way that's sustainable and pull that off, I mean, that. That's interesting to me. It's not, the cost is not based on the load of classes she's taking. Well, like it's not based point, on. I mean, yeah, you can only take, but yeah, it, it is, but it's not a per class in this. She's buying, she's buying a program. It's just the, pro, the package she, she's deal. Buying a, she's buying a, a degree. Okay. And the degree costs X, and as soon, how fast can you get through it? And you got to sign up for a minimum number. Got it. But, okay. Um, I mean, if you take classes in in traditional brick and mortar, mm-hmm. and you pay the two the quarterly or the annual to, or the, I'm sorry, the semester mm-hmm. tuition, um, you can take you know ten hours or fifteen hours. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Doesn't change. Yeah, at most true. at most schools, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the way that's coming off. Natalie is in Cincinnati. Hi, Natalie. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I am trying to figure out how to purchase my next home. If I should go ahead and um, try to get a conventional loan myself or get a conventional loan together with my fiance or if I would even qualify for an FHA. An FHA? Why? Well, I've never owned a home. Okay, so I own a home because I um, got a quit deed from my grandparents who passed me their home. Um, but I, they never had any um, loans on it. It was already paid off. What's so wrong with that? What's wrong it. with that house? It's just small. My family's outgrowing it, and it's in a very bad school district. You're, you have kids. You have How many kids, kids do you yes, have? Yes, I have two kids. You have two kids. How old are your kiddos? Um, three and three months. How long have you had Granny's house? Um, almost six years now. Three-year-old's not in school. Correct. Oh, these six, not six months? Did you say six months or six years? Um, six years I've had the house. No, I'm sorry. The children are how old? Oh, three years old and three months old. Yeah, neither one of them have a school district problem. Not yet. Okay. And the, the, the kids, are these the fiancé's kids? Yes. Okay. Oh. I see. I'm just putting yeah. putting the pieces of the puzzle together. Now the okay. mystery comes clear. Good catch. Okay. So, <laughs> when are you getting married? Um, hopefully whenever we go to a courthouse. We don't have a date set. This We're weekend. We're very open to just going whenever. It's open today. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. Do not, do not, number one, do not buy a home with someone that you do not have, that you are not legally married to. Mm-hmm. You okay. will get yourself into a pinch, all kinds of problems, and do not, just do not do that. So you need to get married and then buy a house. What I would do, if I were in your shoes listening to this, is I would get married and I would live in Granny's house. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. neither one of these kids have a school district problem. When things right. unfold over the next two or three years and you want to start talking about moving, we'll sell Granny's house and the combined income of the two of you plus the down payment coming from Granny's house will be the purchase of your next house in a better school district. But you do not need to buy a house before you're married. Mm -hmm. You do not need to buy a house after you're married right now. What's Granny's house worth? I'm just curious. Uh, I think we can sell it for about 200000 There you go. That's no slouch. No, it's not. This is not a shack. Yeah. No. Okay. It's it's just, it's it's small for us. um, And, and like I said, with the school district, we we have an opportunity to get a house that's not on the market yet coming up soon in yeah. a school district we really like. And yeah. so, sorry, you're not ready. Tried. There will okay. be more opportunities. Okay. There will be more opportunities. You, you don't, you don't to need do to that. buy a school district for a three year old. Okay. You, you just got okay. you got house fever here, and and this newfound responsibility of stepmothership is 
carrying a burden for you and you're trying to do the right thing and be a good mom. And I appreciate that. That's smart of you. Thank you for that. But, um, but you got time, you got time. You'll get there. Okay. If I were you, I would just get married and uh, live in Granny's house for a while. And then when we get ready to move later, we'll work on finding the right deal in the right school district at the right price and sell Granny's house for the down payment. And the two of you now have a nice combined income. You will not need an mm-hmm. FHA loan. You'll get a conventional loan with the two of you. An FHA loan, usually, the only reason anybody ever does that is they just don't have any down payment hardly. Yeah. They don't have anything saved. And so you don't need to do that. Now, I think what's happened is this one particular house popped up and the fever set in, and mm-hmm. now we're trying to figure out a way to back into the deal. Yeah, th- that is the fever. That's the thing. You know, sometimes when you're in a moment, you think, if this moment passes, it'll never happen again. And it's and like... you're right. It won't. That moment won't happen again, but whoop de doop Yeah, something else will happen that'll be just as good. There's a stinking house on every corner. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere. There's only one house. No, no, there's <laughs> none. There's a lot of them. Yeah. True I've that. owned a lot of them. I've lived in a lot of them. It's just a house. You'll get you another one. It's, it's, it's you know, this is it's my forever. No, it's not. It's not your forever house. house. That's a joke. You're not going to be there forever. That's dumb. So, Dave, the interest rates went past 8%. They did? Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Don't say yay. That's awesome. <laughs> Finally, there's going to be some bargains in the real estate market again. Oh, I was ready boy. for. I haven't seen bargains in like a decade, man. I'm ready for some real estate <laughs> bargains. Dave, you just pissed off all those people. I know. <laughs> you don't care. Hey, it's not gonna. You're not. It's not gonna be eight percent forever. No, it's not. I mean, we're going into an election cycle. Do you think the Democrats want high interest rates? That's how you lose the White House. Okay, come on. Facts. Think. Facts. The number of pre- sitting presidents that survive a bad economy and high interest rates for housing and get reelected is really close to zero. Okay. You just can't find that in history. So I think next year is going to be really exciting. I do too. This is The Ramsey Show. What's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. I'm Dave Ramsey. The phone number is 888-825-5225. Jeff's in Indianapolis. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Pleasure to talk with you. You too. What's Uh, up? My wife and I are in our early 70s. Uh, My son lives about a mile from us. He's in his early 40s. He relocated back here to Indiana from California about 11 years ago from L.A. where he was working in the music business. And uh, he was going to take over my insurance agency a few years. uh, I retired about nine years ago. So he did take that over. Uh, He got into tax problems when he was in California because he was working for a music composer that actually treated him as an employee but paid him as an independent contractor so he didn't know anything about paying taxes got behind with the state and the irs end up owing them uh 30 or 40 grand i think we helped him work out a structured repayment plan as a condition to him coming back and getting into insurance and that's been paid through wage garnishments uh since then I discussed with him before he came back the need to stay on top of his taxes and finances because he's never been good with money. During that period of time, many times I'd ask him if he was on this, and he'd just blow up and wouldn't talk to me about it. Three months ago, he called us and told us that he was in tax debt to the IRS again and wanted his mom and I to uh, bail him out, basically, using our share of of, of our estate when we die. Uh, we thought he'd probably owe about fifty or sixty thousand dollars. Turns out he hasn't filed any state or federal tax returns for the past four years. 
nor has he paid any estimated taxes for 2023. We're meeting with our, our accountant next Thursday to go over all this to get specific numbers, but I'm guessing from what I've seen, it's going to be over $200,000, and about half of that is just interest and penalties. He also hasn't paid any 941 withholding or state unemployment tax. Jeez. He has no business being uh, self-employed, obviously. So my question is, uh, we have the assets to do that, but we would have to sell off property and mutual funds. We are in, I don't know if you need our income or what exactly. What's your net worth? Us, net worth is probably about $2.3 million. Okay. And about, 80, about uh, roughly half of that is in two pieces of real estate, our residence here in Indiana and another home we own in Florida. I'm sorry, Jeff. Eighty percent, including the including the real estate, uh, the majority of our assets are in IRAs, Roths, and four hundred three Bs. From what my my wife taught, we've got what, about one hundred forty thousand. Uh, what does he in a money market what, what's, fund. what's his income at the insurance company? Well, he just resigned from that position because after he took it over, he ran it into the ground. He couldn't uh. make a go of it. Right now, he's doing a sales job, and uh, it seems to be going pretty well. But he's only been doing it a couple of months. He's making about uh, seventy-five thousand a year plus bonuses. Is he is he married? He's not married. He has an eight-year-old granddaughter that we absolutely love and, and uh, spends a lot of time with us. Uh, he got he he uh, was going to get married. But they did it kind of reverse. They got pregnant first, and then they, they didn't get along, so they didn't get married. So both of them are here in town, and both of them are, uh, have jobs and our own businesses. Mm -hmm. And they, they get along fine. We, we all get along fine. The insurance agency simple. was yours, and you sold it or gave it to him? Yeah. It was, I actually worked for a captive company, mm -hmm. so they actually owned it. And when I left, they paid me a percentage of my renewals, and that's what, one of the cornerstones of my retirement now. I see. So I didn't have a say in where so the you, policy So you had a went. book of business, but what did he come into? He didn't take over your book, did he? He did, pretty oh, much. Oh, okay. Not, so. not all of it, because they gave some, they split, it was a big agency, so they split it up among other agents. They gave him about half of it. Okay. Jeff. And he ran your book into the ground. Okay. Ran into the ground. Okay. Jeff, does he have any other debt besides the tax debt that you know of? Do you know what that number looks like? I don't think he owes it. He, he rents. He doesn't own a home. I don't think he owes anything else. He doesn't have credit card debts. The tax debt's the only one I'm, that I'm aware of. I, I hear your disgust for his <laughs> behavior in your voice. And yeah, also you hear a, I also hear a dad that loves his son, even though he's been stupid. You hear very well. Um, so I guess there's two options. One is you bail him out, which doesn't sound real appealing. Um, if you don't bail him out, what happens? He just has to work with the IRS and for a we lot got, of years and find, yeah, actually got grow meeting, up. Uh, yeah, we got the thing is, Dave. This this has happened so many times I can't count them. Uh, but you've been there to bail him out him. every time. Yeah, and we, t we had to take him out of high school because of his behavior. We had to send him out to a, a survival camp in Idaho. And then we put him in a private school in California, and all that required a second mortgage on our house at the time. Uh, we bailed him out of a car loan that he didn't keep up with that I co-signed for. Uh, it's just been one thing after another. He just is, is I'm very, okay. I'm very... okay with no being the answer. Yeah, I, it, well, if it were me, I wouldn't do it. Here's 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 what what I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna suggest. <clears throat> he got a he got a severance package from the insurance company that's going to pay out about thirty grand over the next five years, mm -hmm. about six thousand a year. Mm -hmm. I told him that we would help him out if he would sign that over to me to pay back what we're going to advance him. But I initially thought we could do the whole amount. I don't think you should no do way. any of that, Jeff. I, I really don't. That's the way I think. That's I, the way I think. I think that he's grown and I think that he makes a living. It's he's not making he's not poverty level. There's nothing wrong with him. I think he just needs to be a man and do man things. I totally agree you with know? you. And I think you're a great dad. Thank you. There's one other one other question to kind of take this out a little further because I don't think my son realizes how bad a uh, position he's in. If he pays this over the next 20 or 30 years, he still may not have it paid off when we die. And that's all uh, right. We, we may, yeah, but we have, we have all of our 
all of our assets and our our, our uh, real estate is in trust. Mm-hmm. And my daughter is the trustee and the executor. Mm-hmm. And we cur- we currently put a clause in our will that al- that allowed my son to take our house here as part of his settlement of the estate because he loves our home. Mm-hmm. But I'm concerned that if he doesn't have this paid off, I don't even know that I want to le- leave that share of the estate to him because I think the IRS could put a lien on that. They can. And after after and he I'm becomes gonna, the owner, they can, yeah. Yeah, and I want to make sure that, I mean, ultimately it was for him, but it's ultimately also to go to our granddaughter, and I don't want to yeah. eat up our share of that estate. I think you can. We, I think these are two separate questions. Do you help him today? Yeah, they are. Yeah, do you help him today? Jade and I are both saying, sadly, I probably wouldn't. I probably yeah, wouldn't. That's the way I'm thinking. And then uh, do I change the de- change the will? Uh, in a few years, I might. You can change it now. You can change it later. Can he put something in there that says if the debt's not paid off, the home goes elsewhere until the debt is paid off? Yeah, you could leave it in trust for the granddaughter and bypass it, bypass yeah. the, the kid that can't seem to find his way. Yeah, that's so sad. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 40% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Hey guys, if you like this show, you can help us. If you don't like this show, what are you listening for? <laughs> if you like the show, you can help us. We would appreciate it. Click the subscribe button, the follow button, whether you're a YouTube follower, a podcast, click click the appropriate button. It changes the algorithm and pushes the show forward and lets people that don't know about it know about it. Thank you for doing that. You can also share the show. Some show some of the platforms have a share button others are you're just listening on talk radio and you say hey i listen to such and such a station the ramsey show is on there tell people about that sharing you need to share click the share button share a link whatever it is do all that leave a five-star review that says we love ramsey you guys are our marketing plan we don't own a football stadium like so okay. uh, sorry about that yeah and uh yeah we, we you know we don't have 300 million dollars to put into uh marketing around here so you guys are it if you want this show and this whole movement to grow spread the word baby thank you all right dan's in chicago hi dan how are you not too bad how about yourself better than i deserve what's up i have a question i've been listening to you for uh probably about four or five months now and you're probably gonna yell at me but i have several whole life policies Mm -hmm. and after listening to you um and doing a lot of research um come to realize how poor of an investment this is. Sorry, it's not an investment, um, an expense. Um, but wondering if we do decide to cancel our policies, what we should do, uh, whether we should leave the policies in place and just keep the lower death benefit, or if we should take the cash render value and invest that someplace else. First thing you do is make sure you have the proper amount of life insurance in place and term life insurance. 
go to an independent Correct. go yeah. to an independent broker, somebody like Xander, and get the best possible price on that. Once that's in place, we can talk about canceling these, and then I would cancel them completely. Mm-hmm. I'm not sort of playing with rattlesnakes. Right. Yeah, I've already I've already actually gone on to the, uh, Xander and have several uh, quotes. So I'm just looking at the best one. Yeah. Um, ready to get that in place, and then like I said, so yeah, then just cancel, cancel it. Just cancel it, and it'll, dro- it'll drop some cash, cash value into your hand, and then wherever you are on the baby steps, you'll take that cash value and advance your baby steps. How much money do you think it'll be? Uh, it will be roughly hundred and hundred and fifteen thousand in cash render value. Fabulous. Where are you in the baby steps? Uh, we're, well, we're in step seven paying off. Or, the house well, is paid off? Step, no, sorry, step six. Uh, oh, okay, step what six do you own your home? Paid off early next year. Uh, roughly 200000 Okay. All right. So this will, this, will, this will just advance that then. Okay. Yeah. And is there any, is there, I, I thought I read someplace that there is a time frame where you have to have a policy, you have to have a policy in place for a certain number of years before you can take the cash render value out, otherwise you get hit with a penalty. Is that accurate? No. No, your basis no. in a whole life policy is what you've put into it. And anything you take out that's more than that is a gain. But very seldom do you get more out than you put in because the fees are so high and it's such a horrible product. So you right. actually yeah, you actually well, lose money almost every time. So it's not a taxable right. we, not a taxable event. Right. Yeah, and we have lost money up to this point, which is uh, yeah. frustrating. I'm glad I started listening to you guys. Um I'm curious so, how much okay. have you put in? Uh, roughly 170. Yeah. Wow. And get 115 out. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. yeah that. Yeah, that's brutal. that's so that you know if you've, you you don't have, you do not have a taxable event period. Mm-hmm. It's not a there's no because it's not it's not an investment so it's not a you don't approach it like a gain. If you if you had a capital gain investment if you've not owned it one year capital gains don't apply ordinary income apply, applies mm-hmm. but this is not an investment so it doesn't come that does not come up. If you bought a whole life policy this year and you cashed it out this year, capital gains calculation does not apply to that. It's simply your basis is what you paid for it. Are you getting out more or less than what you paid in? That's the simple calculation on the taxes. So you're fine. You're fine. You're not going to be taxes. You're, you're not fine, but you're not going to be taxes. No, he's not fine. He he lost yeah. a lot of money. It's so sad. <laughs> it's a horrible thing. Eli is in Little Rock, Arkansas. Hi, Eli. How are you? Hi, Dave and Jade. It's an honor to talk to you. How are y'all? Better than we deserve. What's up? Yeah, so I just had a quick question. Um, My wife and I have a vehicle uh, that is a $20,000 car loan. Uh, We are in baby step number two. We have our um, uh, uh, $1,000 safety net and everything. Um, My question is about the vehicle. Um, What we have is we have $20,000 in student loans to pay off, and we have the vehicle, which has a $20,000 note on it. The payment per month is three hundred fifty-five dollars. Mm-hmm. We make we make between six thousand and seven thousand a month. Um, we're both in education, so my question is, what to do with that vehicle? Um, we can afford the payment. You know, obviously we can pay it off. Or I know, Dave. I know you hate brand new cars. We did buy the car brand new, um, but that was before we really started with this whole process. Yeah, so that, that's not that's, that, that's their next purchase. We worry about that now. We so the way we look at cars is two things: if all of the things you own that have wheels and motors um, added up equals less than half your annual income, you're okay. Mm-hmm. This this one is. Okay. Do you have an expensive car in the second car? No, sir. Our second car, there's there's no note on it. No, I'm asking what its value it's is. Oh, the value. The value of that car, I've blue booked it. It's it's around nineteen thousand. Okay, so you got forty thousand dollars worth of vehicles. You make eighty five thousand dollars a year. So you, you know you're about half. Mm-hmm. You know you don't need to buy anything else with a dad gum motor. I can tell you that. Right? That's yeah. No. We're, about where you are. We're the, definitely not. Yeah, we're not this, going in any deeper. That's a yeah, fact. The uh, then the second thing is, can I be debt free other than the house? Baby step two in two years or less. Can you pay off forty thousand dollars in two years or less? I believe so. Yes, sir. I think you can too. So if you want to struggle through and keep the car, you can. If you want to move down in car and accelerate this process by about six months, you could do that. But um, okay. that you know, but I think you got two years of plowing through mm-hmm. forty thousand dollars worth of debt, making eighty. Yeah. I'd, All right. What do you think you'll do? I'd probably plow plow through. What are you going to do? I, I think we'll plow through. Um, we have we have two small children, um, mm-hmm. and um, you know it's kind of. The the car it's a it's a great car it's been a great car for us we have no issues with it I just I'm to that point where I'm just like oh I just want to get done with it yeah. you know mm-hmm. um, 
but I, I think that if we were to we were if we were to to sell it, we would take a little bit of a hit. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, I ultimately think that we would be in the situation where we'd be looking for something. It needs to be. My wife and I both live. We live about three hours from our family, um, so we we take quite a few little trips to see our parents and things mm-hmm. like that. So we we need some. We want something reliable, but you know. I'm you, just, I wanted your input. I figured yeah. that it's I mean, kind of you, know, right you need area. to get that every dollar budget dialed in and crank mm-hmm. that yes, lifestyle sir, I'm, down. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, get that, crank that lifestyle down, and you got to be at a $2,000 a month burn rate. Yeah. And you might yes, be sir. able to uh, crank it up and keep the car by adding more income in. I mean, are you guys doing anything extra to bring in income? Not at this moment. Um, I know it sounds kind of funny, but we actually have, in the past, we've donated plasma. We have a plasma center right down the road. Um, and it, you wouldn't believe how much people will pay, pay for plasma. I hear. Um, Not as much but, as they'll pay you to tutor. No, you're right about that. You're okay. right about that. And there's that. no needles uh, involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't funny. be, in there theory, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yuck. Oh. Look, people are out here giving plasma and making a hundred dollars i don't know per vial i don't know how they do it but i'm like oh i'd rather deliver pizzas <laughs> yeah i think i think, I think i'm well yeah Ugh. so guys here's the deal the car i love cars i'm just a boy i like cars with big mufflers and loud engines i'm a redneck boy <laughs> so i'm i'm all about cars but here's the thing it's the largest thing that you and i buy that goes down in value and then the average new car loses 60 to 70% of its value in the first three years. Ouch. That means you're turning $30,000 into $12,000 and then scratching your head and wondering why you're broke. Mm-hmm. See, what you ought to do if you're driving one of those things, you ought to roll down the window and just throw $100 bills out as you're going down the road because that's basically what's happening. And so if you're driving a $50,000 car and you make $60,000, you're broke people Mm. and you're always going to be broke people because you have too much of your mathematical juice tied up in something that's going down in value and i love cars i get it i get the fever i understand but it's the dumbest thing we do with money you guys Mm -hmm. it's particularly a middle class dumb thing to do this is the ramsey show Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for being with us. Caitlin is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Hi, Caitlin. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so I guess to get short with it, I need to figure out how to essentially get my spouse. He is mentally on board with me, but not physically on board with me in not just baby steps, but financial aspects in general. He has a bit of a addiction with uh, um, instant gratification. Okay. Um, it's not an addiction. By, by, it's not an addiction. By, it's just immaturity. Um, uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yes. How, how old is he? Um, he is the same age as me. He's thirty-two. Okay. How does that manifest? What does it look like? His spending 
We'll put it in addiction um, for quotes right now. Sure. Um, so he is pretty, he's got a little bit better. I'll give him that credit, but he is pretty selfish. Um, some examples are instead of, I mean, the family car was a decent family car, one that, that fits the kids. We, out, we unfortunately outgrew it, not to him knowing. Um, but then he, instead of just leaving it as a daily, he needed to um, lower it, which makes it more expensive and ruins the car more. Then he needed to buy a customized steering wheel that absolutely wasn't needed. Then he needed to do this and he knew that. Um, he souped he up your family minivan? Wow. So not the minivan. It was a wagon. It was his daily that would still fit us at the time. Not anymore, but at the time would fit all of us. Mm-hmm. And then I had like a daily. Um, that was at all of us. And is he creating debt while doing this? Oh, I can't even argue. I, I can't even like fathom the amount. Like being a person that before I met him, I bought my own house as a single mom. It completely destroys me. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm in, I have so much stress from everything he's done. Actually, the last year I spent curing like stress seizures. Wow. Okay. Um, you said you had children. How many? Um, we have three children. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is not biologically his, but he, since day one, has taken care of her like he is his. She is his, excuse me. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, this is not a money problem. It's not a budget problem. This is a marriage no. problem. It's a marriage problem. And so uh, we end up backing into those sometimes through budgeting and that kind of stuff. But there's budgets don't control people. People control budgets. Mm-hmm. Or don't, or in some cases, don't do a budget, or in some cases, don't live with a budget. But budgets yeah. aren't, are they don't have any magic powers. It's just simply a roadmap. Mm-hmm. Maps don't control people. You just look at the roadmap, and am I going to go down, the, go. am I going to go down yeah. the road or not? You know, that's all a budget is. It's just a map. And so, um, and, and wives don't control husbands, and husbands don't control wives. Yeah. As much as they'd like to, and as much as it would be awesome if we could pull it off, we just can't do it. Mm. Um, yeah. And so what we've got here is, is as you said, I, you know, selfish and immature guy who's putting his own impulses ahead of the good of his family. Have, uh, have you guys reached out to a counselor? That's what you need. Yeah, yes. So we've done marriage counseling already um, that I set up that then he denied. You're and not then done. done. Marriage counseling, but you... he was ready. Oh. No, I know. So we've done these things because that's where it's led to. Um, I've also did he go? Him, he went two times to the one I set up, and then he denied going because he was essentially being blamed for things, and he didn't like it. He was getting defensive, and it's like, well, not saying that I'm perfect, but you know, your selfish habits are yeah. creating an issue. Yeah. Um, um, then he set up marriage counseling. He also more recently is going back to therapy. For himself, for himself. Past, okay. Two years ago, but he is going now, um, and now he is seeing a, and I don't remember the difference between psychiatrist and psychologist, but technically, okay. I guess seeing both. So, um, so he's got a lot of stuff going on, huh? Uh, he, unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the first thing you said when you said, "Hey, we went to counseling. He didn't like my counselor because this and that." I will say. Both spouses need to feel good with the counselor because, you know, Sam and I, you know, we, we've gone to counselors and it's been like, I don't like her or I didn't like him. And you do sometimes yeah. have yeah, but to. But if you don't like them because they're telling you the truth, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. Yeah. Yes. I mean, but, he also didn't like that the guy didn't get his name right a couple of times, which I won't argue, you know, whatever. But um, but yeah, it, it was mostly because of he's telling him the truth and he doesn't want to hear it. Yeah, that's mostly. So he is going and he is going for himself. Uh, that's good. I think the hard part with this is this is not necessarily going to be mean that next week things are different, right? Like this is something Correct. that's going yep. to play out over time. Um, mm-hmm. And he's still actively creating debt for your family at this moment in time, right? Or no, yeah, that's unfortunately, stopped. Unfortunately, yes. Even though we try to work out things that, you know, give him leniency isn't really the word. Um, and the debt is to have... If he's if he's running these things up on credit cards, is your name on the credit card or is it just these are cards that he's pulling out and he's doing this on his own? So he he had like one in my name that he put into collections that then I paid off because I was also on it trying to help him build credit from when we first got married. OK, and that one's closed. Um, yep. And that, that one's closed. Um, he did have he's got three of his own. 
he hasn't touched credit cards in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And then he, um, then I, you know, he, we kind of discussed how we we're going to make things work. And I asked if he was ready. And so he got a $300 limit back, um, like two weeks ago and he racked that up. Plus he had a hundred dollars cash. Um, so he spent $400 in about five days. So I took the credit card away. I was like, you clearly aren't ready. You told me you're well, ready. Well, I so think, I think as a rule of thumb in your family in general, you need to cut up all the credit cards and no one uses them. No one yep. uses any more credit cards. So that's thing one is we just don't operate on debt anymore. I mean, my screen says that, you know, if you're in, in, in the, trying to do the baby steps, like you definitely cannot use credit cards anymore. So those get cut up. And then after that, yeah, you probably do need to have a really a real conversation about how his access is to this money if he's just going to go off and spend five and six hundred. I mean, that is that's a scary position to be in, Dave. OK, on at some point through you working with a counselor or working with, and or working with his counselor, the day is going to come and it's coming pretty soon based on the tone of your voice that you're finally going to say something like, if we can't get on the same page with money and you can't be a grown man and take care of your family instead of buying freaking steering wheels, then I'm not going to be able to be here anymore because you're terrifying me. Mm. I am awake at night. I've never been in debt like this. Your out of control, childish behavior with money is terrifying me. I can't live like this. So if you can't be a grown man and learn to control your impulses, you're not a 12 year old little boy. You're acting like one, but if you can't be a grown man and we can't get a, a, a bead on, we're going to manage our income together for the good of this family that will include you doing some fun things and me doing some fun things, but it's going to include being a freaking responsible grown up. Yeah. And if we can't get to that point, I'm not going to be able to be here. Mm-hmm. And you need the guidance of a good counselor on how to say that and when to say that. I'm not suggesting you hang up the phone and say, Dave Ramsey said that. Sure. Um, but I'm telling you, if you do not get there systematically and begin to put that in front of him, one day, here's what's going to happen. And I know this because I've counseled thousands of couples. You're going to have that little switch that particularly ladies have down inside them. And it's going to blow a fuse. And you're going to be done. And no amount of talking and no amount of conjoling and no amount of logic and no amount of preachers and no amount of nothing is going to get you back in the marriage. You're going to wave bye-bye because you're going to blow a gasket and you will have had it. And I've tried to reel these ladies back in after they've blown it and show them that the guy gave he, he gave in. He gave in too late. She's gone. All you see is her back walking away. She's done. You wait, you just kept on, you kept on, you kept on, you kept on until she blows a freaking gasket. And you're, it's in your voice, I can hear it. So you need to keep away from that gasket blowing by getting some coaching on how to bring him to bear before you don't care if he comes to bear anymore. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM 
Ramsey or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. The number one cause of divorce in North America today is money fights and money problems. The number one barrier to building wealth is not being on the same page, not working together. We found in the data when we studied millionaires, this is data, not your feelings, not your broke brother-in-law's opinion, not some moron on TikTok who's an influencer, but actual data that 87% of the millionaires say one of the key reasons they were able to build wealth was they were able to work together as a team with their spouse. Yeah. Proverbs 31 says, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her and he will have no lack of gain. I like that phrase, no lack of gain. I want some of that no lack of gain thing. And so that means I get to listen to my virtuous wife. Mm. If you is a wife and you is virtuous, that means you don't think you're the Holy Spirit. You think you're the wife. You're not in charge, but you have common sense, as my wife says all the time. She, I have common sense. Well, That's there's what some, Sharon always says when she's arguing with me. But I have common sense. There's some caveats to what you said there, Dave. A, the wife's got to be virtuous. Mm-hmm. And then B, the husband has to, his heart has to trust her. Yeah. So yeah. there's. Let me just tell you, when, I, when we went broke, I bought houses. I bought entire apartment complexes. That my wife didn't even know existed. Ooh. We went to dinner the other night in Nashville, and we're, you know, these areas of Nashville that are being regentrified. Uh, they were the hood, and now they're coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? And I used to buy that stuff back mm-hmm. in the day, 30 years ago. So we're down there in this area that's now cool and didn't used to be. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, boy, we used to own that right there. And she goes, you're kidding. This is 35 years ago. She never knew we owned it. It's fun. But I mean, I bought crap. And and guess what? I went broke, too. So now after that, and I read that proverb in my late 20s. I'm now in my 60s. And I since then have never again made major financial decisions without my wife's input. My wife, by the way, is a full-time mom with a degree in child and family studies. (laughs) Home ec. Okay. I run a $300 million business. People all over America listen to what Dave Ramsey says about money. He checks with his wife. Why? Because I want no lack of gain. And, and I, I don't safely wanna, trust her. I don't want to mess with Sharon. That's all I'm saying. Well, you don't want that either. There's that hillbilly thing. But, the, you know, they're highly trained in pots and pans. <laughs> I hear. And I'm not saying just the cooking part. Okay. But, <laughs> but the, uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, so if you know this, Why would you go against the system? The system is couples that work together, have high quality communication, quality relationships, a higher probability of ending this thing together. Yes. Not apart. And a higher probability of wealth building. There is nothing in this whole set of data that tells you to lower the car and buy a steering wheel. Right. But there is part of this whole conversation that... This is the thing. When you do start combining your money and when you do say, you know what, let's do this thing together. It will air all the dirty laundry. Like it'll show everything in your marriage that needs help. It will show who's immature. It will show who's yeah, I mean, like it'll know, start you, to you reveal can't that stuff. You hide target bags under the bed anymore and think it's cute. No. Retail therapy princess. Yeah. You can't. That's not cool. Yeah. It's a girl thing. No, it's a stupid thing. It's mm-hmm. a little girl thing. It's an immature little girl thing. Yeah. It does. I mean, women actually 
have a backbone, walk in and go, look, this is what we're buying. I get a vote, too. Yeah. But the point is... I don't need to hide stuff from my wife or her from me. The point is you set out, you do set out on a journey where it's like, okay, like, I thought I could do things my way. You can't do everything your way. I thought, uh, you know what? I'm realizing I have some trust issues. Like, you start to realize these things about yourself, about your spouse, and it's fine. You have to continue to go through that journey so that you can do this thing and you're doing it together and it's something that's bringing you together as opposed to yeah. well i try to share my finances with him and he's just like this and th- like no you have to walk through it that, like, mean, you have that to go means through that it. you have to deal with it yeah that's part of it that's part of getting the getting exactly your marriage act together exactly getting your money act together mm-hmm. it's part of the deal and so god yeah. it's, it's it's here's the thing it's harder but it's easier yes i get that it's harder because i have to I can't just do whatever I want to do. Right. I have to actually work with someone else and come to agreement that this is good for the greater whole called mm-hmm. the Ramses, mm-hmm. right? Not just what little Davy wants. Little Davy <laughs> wants a car. <laughs> little Davy wants a new bass boat. Those bass are out running me. I need a bigger motor. Little <laughs> Davy, you know, I mean, I'm serious. Because here's the thing. Here's the funny part about this. Larry Burkett used to talk about this. When women go crazy... They buy an expensive purse. When a guy goes crazy, he buys a $35,000 thingy with an engine in it of some kind. <laughs> a a- side-by-side, a 18-wheeler, a, I don't know, a, 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 all the things I've bought over mm-hmm. time. I've bought them all. because mm-hmm. I mean, Four-wheelers, five-wheelers, eight-wheelers, no-wheelers, boats. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh-huh. and, and we drop 30 k she drops 300 you know what? I'm with that. Yes. Guys, you y'all when we you go, have expensive when we go, taste. When we go big and stupid on the impulse, we go big. big. Yeah. I'm with that. I'm yeah. with that. By and large. I mean and, and then go, honey, look what I did. Yeah. You know, I get that. I hope we can afford this because I just bought it. You know, oh my God. No, 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 no. It's so here's the thing. Two grown ups learning the difficult process of learning to work together. And loving the other one so much that I actually will listen to them, Mm. causing us to be in concert where the music is beautiful is the highest probability of a fabulous marriage ending up married together at the end and becoming wealthy. Yeah. Very few people in our data became wealthy in spite of their stupid spouse. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that That wouldn't play. They did whatever they wanted to do, and we have separate accounts because I believe in independence. Nope. You shouldn't have got married if you believe in independence, because it's not really good for your marriage, this independence thing. Look. I have rights. Yeah, I didn't say you didn't have rights. You, you know, but, he, you know, at first in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, unto thee all my worldly goods I pledge. If Sam Warshaw walked up in here and said... I'm going to keep my money separate from you. I want my own account. You would never see him again. I'm just telling you, you would never, see, <laughs> you never would f- never see him again, Dave. Whoa, that's pretty hardcore. Never find the body. I'm just saying that is I would it, take is, a is there, fin- is there I take duct tape and baseball bats involved. I don't want to know here. <laughs> I take offense to that. If I'm with a spouse, I've had your dad gum babies, and you're saying you don't want to share money. Ooh. I have a problem with that. Don't come in my bed. Don't come. Whoa. Don't even come in there. Whoa. Don't do it. And don't. Exp- Whoa. <laughs> Dave, don't get me you started. You want to share some things, but not others. No, huh? Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. You have to think about this. It doesn't make sense. These things that you'll share and then suddenly it's you can't have it all or nothing. Right. Yeah. When you when you do marriage, you go all the way in. You can't it, say 90 percent, but not 10 percent. And the preacher says, and now you are. One. One. Not, and now you are a joint venture. Mm-hmm. He doesn't pronounce you a joint venture. That's right. Where we sort of, kind of do this thing. Sort of, we're sort gonna, of, we're kind gonna, of. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to share a bed, but not the mayonnaise. Yeah. Not so, the mustard. Sorta, That's your mustard because we're roommates. Sort of, kind of doesn't work on much. You can't sort of, kind of Remember be roommates faithful. in college? Did you ever, did you ever fight over the mustard? Like, you used my mustard? Yeah. That, oh. That's how stupid this yeah, is. Yeah, it's dumb. Yeah, it's just dumb. So all you little people out there that get all upset when we do this stuff, that was your cue. Yeah. It's dumb. This is The Ramsey Show.
Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. Jet is in Phoenix. Hi, Jet. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hi. How you doing, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, not much. Hey, we've been doing all the baby steps, gosh, as long as I can remember. I'm 25 now. The only one we're not on is step six um, because we don't have a home. I uh, recently got married and kind of told my wife we're going to rent for a couple of years, save some money to put a down payment on a house and waive the PMI. Uh, been very blessed recently. She got a new job. I got a huge new job. And our household income has doubled, if not tripled right now. Yay! Way to go! So, um, Way to go! It's a blessing. It really is a blessing. Um, but my question for you, you know, we were looking in the house range of three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000. And now with this huge promotion, we have our lease ending in two months. Do we sign another lease, save up another, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000, and now jump into the housing range of seven hundred dollars to eight hundred, dollars and see what the interests are doing? Um, and, and so I just don't know, hey, is it better to just get in the housing market now, get a three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 house, or wait another year? where you can put 20, 25, 30% down on a house and get a bigger house that we've been wanting that we're going to fill children with and our dog will finally have a yard. It's kind of the question that I have for you, <laughs> kind of the housing market and what you see happening. I don't think either plan is bad. I think it's okay. just a matter of personal preference. Mm -hmm. Right. So you buy the 300, what's going to happen is in two years, you're going to sell it and move up. Yeah. Which and is fine. You You'll make money on it. You'll make money. I mean, Phoenix yeah. is a wonderful market. Mm -hmm. It um, is. I'm competing with a lot of people coming to Phoenix from the West. Nah, you'll be all right. They have a lot more money than I do. You'll be all right. You're 25. Did you say? Did you say you already have kids, or you will have kids? Well, we're we're starting to look to have kids. Um, yeah. If the Lord provides that, then awesome. But I really want to get a house. She really wants to get a house before we start trying to have kids. Um, and That's fine. Yeah. Really the, the little down. ones don't take up much room, so <laughs> especially in the beginning, they're no, like this they big. Don't. Yeah, they're tiny. So. <laughs> when they come out, they're little. So. Yeah. The only thing I thought of off the top is just moving is a pain in the butt. So you're thinking, right. okay, I'm moving from this house to that house, and then that house to the next house. Moving is a pain. It's kind of expensive. That was the first thought I had. But I, am, then... I am not afraid to rent for a year longer mm -hmm. and call that patience. I'm not afraid to do that if I'm you. Mm -hmm. I have Ooh. done that. So I know I'm not afraid to do it. Okay. I'm also not afraid to jump in, buy something, and, uh, you know, plan on flipping it, flipping out of it, and moving up a notch two or three years from now. Mm. So either one is fine. It's a matter of whether you, like Jade said, I hate moving, but Me too. I mean, I grew up with a real estate, my parents' real estate business. Our, when I was a kid, our furniture was trained to jump on the truck. So, um, <laughs> You know, we moved all the time, right? So it was just part of it. In real estate people trade houses like nothing. So, um, you know, uh, you can do that. Or if you hate moving and you really want to just sit there and go, I got this very specific thing. What does your wife want to do? You know, listening to you guys, especially the last segment, she's very trusting in me in this situation. Um, we, we've been, we don't mind the renting um, we would love to be in a house. She's ready to be in a house. I'm ready to be in a house. Of these two choices, what does your house. wife want to do? <laughs> I, she's, I don't, I really think that she's fine either way. I think she's ready to get into a house is where I think uh, she is not telling me that she is. Why don't you ask her? <laughs> oh, I have. She's like, Jet, whatever you want to do. I know. You know that's not an answer. And ask her to pick. Yeah, whatever you want to do is I'm going to bring it up later if you do it wrong. I don't want to go with that one, okay? No, whatever right, whatever right. I want to do is what, what I want to do is I want you to say it out loud and then we'll discuss whether we do what you want to do. Let's that's okay. Mm. 
You know, I mean, ask her. Because, I mean, when I get Sharon actually doing that called talking the problem through, Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I get gold in the relationship and I get gold in the financial wisdom of working together as a married couple. But, yeah, Yeah. she was the worst. In the first seven years we were married, man, she's like, whatever you want to do, honey, which is southern for later I'm going to kill you. You know, I mean, it's like, (laughs) whatever you want to do, honey. You know, it's like, oh, God. You're killing me with this passive aggressive stuff, right? So, but yeah, but that was the first seven years of our marriage, and then I went and did some. I went and did whatever I wanted to do. You did. I thought, I thought she meant it. Ooh. She didn't mean it. I found out later. It's yeah. like you know, what's wrong with you? Nothing. See, she didn't mean that either. There was something. You know, that's why you threw a pan across that dadgum thing. <laughs> anyway, all right. Jacob is with us. Jacob is in Nashville. Hi, Jacob. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys? We're having way too much fun and mm-hmm. getting paid. What's up? <laughs> That's great to hear. Hey, uh, I'm a longtime listener, and this is my first time talking to you. And um, I have uh, heard you guys discuss this with folks that are a little older than me, um, but I'm in my in my 20s, and I'm asking about uh, buying a toy, uh, specifically a, a, a play car. Cool. Um, what is it? And just a – well, I, I – I haven't ironed it down yet, but I like muscle cars. Yeah. Like which one? Like what's your favorite too? What's your favorite too? Either Mustang or Camaro. Not necessarily a Ford or a Chevy guy. Um, Like a '60s vintage. One I like better. Or '70s. More newer. uh, Newer. Um, Oh, like new Camaros. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Like a five zero or yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Cool. All right. So what's that? What's that thing run? How much? You know, buying used, not new, and um, thinking in the thirty to forty range. Okay, and and what do you make? So uh, I'm married, household income, no kids. Uh, we're between one fifty and two hundred a year. Okay, and how much money do you have? Uh, forty, right at forty. Um, uh, for the past four or five years, uh, you have forty thousand dollars. Uh, yes, sir. Cash. That's all the money you have in the world. Oh no, 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 sir. No, just, <laughs> Ooh, just set aside for the car. I said, how much money do you have? Not not for the car. Total. How much money do you have? Okay, um, probably between eighty and ninety. Is that including an emergency fund? Like, do you have do you have three to six months of emergency set aside? Yes. So that's that includes the emergency fund, and then we've got a little extra liquid cash, and then I have a car fund that has forty thousand in it. Got it. Okay, number one rule for toys is pay cash. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Are and, toys. And they, they don't matter. Yeah. Number two rule is I use the burn it in the middle of the living room floor rule. Okay. If I take that much sure. money and I burn it in the fireplace tonight, $40,000, I'm going to burn it in the fireplace. Does my life change? In your case, I mean, I'll be- that, that would be an ouchie. Sure. That would hurt. If, yes, you've, if you've got $100 million, it's not an ouchie. Mm-hmm. Right? You don't notice. It's like buying a biscuit. Yeah. Right? For sure. So that's the rule I use. I, I think your, I don't think yours passes that test. I think I think it would take your breath away if you burned up 40 k And that you, cause that's what you, I mean, that's what a toy is. You just, you just poof, poof. Yeah. And the money's not gone. You can sell with the car again. I don't mean that. But it, it that tells you if you're putting too much money in... Uh, things that don't matter. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think you're over the line on that. That's what it smells like to me. You do what you want to do, but that's how I measure it. Shaw Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Gray's with us in Cookville, Tennessee. Hi, Gray. How are you? Hey, guys. It's a pleasure to speak with you. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Good. Uh, so about a month ago, uh, I learned that uh, my mom actually passed away uh, suddenly. And, oh, I'm um, sorry. 
I, uh, my, my, my dad's still alive, so, uh, I've never had to be in this situation before. Uh, I'm the oldest brother of two. And, um, so I'm kind of taking care of everything. Um, she has a car, uh, that still has, uh, a loan on it. Uh, and I Kelly blue book, the value, uh, she's upside down in it. So, um, I still have possession of the car, but, um, I'm kind of lost, uh, as to, where to go from here? Okay, uh, she stop, has stop some a other second. Debt. I'm sorry. Okay. How, how old was your mom? She was 50, 54. I'm sorry, Grady. 54. I'm sorry. What happened to her? Um, don't really know. I just kind of, uh, they found her, found her asleep. Mm. Mm. Okay. And uh, she and your dad aren't together? Correct. Okay. So she was a single lady, divorced. And you're her, mm-hmm. the, you're her oldest son, and so you'll be taking care of the estate. But there was no will. Correct, and okay. she doesn't have a lot. The car was pretty much the only major asset that she had, up okay. and just some small accounts here and there. So no property or anything okay. like that. Um, all right. Here, here's the thing: when you pass away, what you own stands good for what you owe. What assets minus liabilities is called net worth. With what you've described to me, the car is upside down more than all the other things that your mom owned. So she had a negative net worth. Does that make sense? Yeah, I I haven't gotten uh, any information on any accounts that she has as far as death benefits, uh, life insurance or anything like that. Life insurance is not included in the equation. Okay, gotcha. But, the, but I mean, so the, what is owed on the car? Uh, about twelve thousand. And w- what is it worth? About t- uh, nine or ten. Okay, so it's three thousand dollars upside down. We'll say. Okay. Does she have more than three thousand dollars of assets anywhere else in accounts or anything else? Do you think? Uh, no. I don't think not. she does either. If it would be close, if so. Yeah, I don't think she does either. So. Here's here's the thing. You don't have an estate to settle. You do not owe any money. Her estate has to stand good for what she has. And so there's not if there was a ten thousand dollar C D before you could put that in you or your brother's pockets, you'd have to cover the deficit on the car, the hole in the car. But there's not a ten thousand dollar C D. So what this means is the bank gets the car and that's all they get. So call them and tell them to come get it and give them a copy of the death certificate. You can order that from the state. And it takes about two weeks to get the death certificate in, but you can just tell them what's going on, okay? There's no will. The lady died without a will. That means intestate without a will in the state of Tennessee, which is where you are. And there's no assets. She doesn't have anything. And so you can have the car you need to take the car back folks because it's all you're going to get and no one is going to pay you the balance on the loan different because no one is liable mm-hmm. okay so is it is it a local bank or do you know um i think it's uh i think uh, no it's not it's corporate okay all right i just holler at try to try to get a phone number on tell them what's going on say i'm trying to do the honorable thing how's the easiest way i can get you the car because there's no assets in this estate, there's no estate going to be probated. There is zero, and so, but I, but no one's going to pay for the car. No one pays twelve thousand dollars for a nine thousand dollar car. So, mm-hmm. you guys need to come get it. You're not liable for okay. it. You understand me, Gray? Mm-hmm. I understand. Okay, you as don't pay. You do not pay a payment. Do not pay any insurance. Do not renew the tags. Do not put any of your money in this black hole. Whatever money you put into this is gone. Don't do it. Just tell them to come get the car. And, and, and you know, if they want some help it, just to make it easy, we'll get them a copy of the death certificate mm-hmm. so they know what's going on. But that's all there is. Don't, but you don't need to hire an attorney. You don't need to do anything. It's just done. It's sad. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. The bad, that's the bad news. The good news is you don't have to do anything. Yeah. There's no big rigmarole. You know, there's no big probate court hearing and trying to figure it out with your brothers because there's six thousand dollars we have to try to figure out how to split up or something. Good Lord, thank you. You would have spent almost almost you spent more time on that than it was worth because the it's great news that that there's nothing you have to do except just get you know get rid of the car and let the people know where they can come get it and 
please don't spend any of your money on this. Mm -hmm. You are under no moral or legal or financial obligation to take care of any of this. You're letting the folks that have the car loan know where the car is is a courtesy on your part. Mm -hmm. And that's the extent of it. Otherwise, if he did not do that, they would have to tr basically track this down on their own. Yeah, they just have to come try to find the car, but yeah. it's going to be sitting somewhere where the tires go down yeah. and and somebody's going to tow it and it's going to end up in yeah. some impound lot or whatever. I mean, it's just going to disappear into the ether, you mm -hmm. know, in, uh, into the nothingness that is our world. Yeah. But yeah. Um, That's sad. So, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. So it's really good, folks, for you to remember out there if um, you're dealing with an estate. Uh, because people get this stuff screwed up all the time. Like dad had credit cards in his name. You're not liable yeah, for those. People think they have to pay for it. Yeah, you're not liable for those. But he had a paid for $60,000 car. Oh, That'll well, now now the car has to be sold to pay the credit cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, we want to keep the car. Well, then you're going to pay, the, <laughs> right. pay the credit cards. Because the assets have to stand good for the debts. That's how that works. You can't just take the assets and let the debts be. You mm -hmm. can't. You, it's not how it works. Mm -hmm. But in his, in Gray's case, there's just not any, not enough assets to cover the debts. Yeah, that's the whole process. So, ouch. That's tough. Ouch. Wow. All right, Adam is in San Antonio. Hi, Adam. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So. I've got a little bit of land, and I'm looking to put some light industrial space on it. Uh, you know, those garage doors you roll up and a small office space inside of it. Love it. Um, just, right now, uh, I've got a total of 225000 to 230000 uh, broken down. That's forty k in cash, one hundred thirty k in taxable non-retirement investments, and fifty five in Roth. My question is, do I cash out the taxable non-retirement, or do I sell my house to be able to pay for this construction to go into place because my mentality is the housing market went up in 2022 i'm sitting on a 3.75 percent interest rate i don't think we're going to have a giant jump in rates and homes anytime soon but my accounts they're still not where they have peaked back uh about a year ago mm -hmm. so i still think there's some upward mobility on that so yeah. just looking through your insight you don't sell your personal residence to do investing Okay, I mean, I'm a single guy, so an apartment wouldn't break me. Uh, I know, but, but I, you're being you're you're pushing it too far. You, you, okay. keep, you need to keep your investments separate from your just because you're single doesn't mean you don't need to keep your investments separate from your personal. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, yeah, I mean, you could build an apartment over the top of one of those roll ups and go live in it. That's a cool yeah. idea if you want to do that. But I wouldn't do that. No, I wouldn't either. Oh, uh, I, I would just. Uh, uh, I mean, you you can put up a building for 140. No, no, I've got the other cash, and then um, I've got some funds for this. I'm um, sorry, you just told us all the funds you had. I've got another investor getting in on it. This is my house. Mm. Okay, no, this is different. You own the ground. You don't need a partner. Slow no. your butt down. You are you are going at a hundred miles an hour. You're gonna run in the wall, man. Slow down. Slow down. It's okay. You got plenty of time. How old are you? 32. Yeah. Yes, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Yeah. So what's it take to build the building? Uh, uh, I was going to phase it, and so we were going to do... What's phase uh, one? Phase one is going to be one building, five units, um, with a slab. How much? And then I think the road getting to it. So about... Uh, you're not ready. You're not, you're not ready. You're not ready. You don't know your numbers either, so that's another reason you're not ready. No, you don't bring in partners. The only ship that won't sail is a partnership. You're going to get yourself in a mess, dude. Don't do that. Slow down. Don't sell your house. You got time to do this. Do it right.
Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. If you didn't know, you can come and watch the show happen. We're on the air from 1 to 4 Central Time every day. Our lobby is a fun experience. You get to see a lot of cool Ramsey things. And those of you that are plugged into this stuff, there's a great bookstore. There's free homemade chocolate chip cookies and free coffee. Yum, yum, yum. And see, if you people don't come visit, Jade and I have to eat all those cookies. It's a rule. So, yeah, and it's completely free. A lot of folks, uh, while they're doing some kind of drive through or by Nashville, put us on one of their stops. Thank you for doing that. We get to meet all of you, come out and take a picture with you and all that kind of stuff. In the lobby also, right across the glass from Jade and I, we're looking at these beautiful people. Grant and Christine are with us, standing on the debt-free stage, which can only mean one thing. They're debt-free. Wahoo! Welcome, yes. guys. <laughs> welcome. Good to have you. Where do y'all live? St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, fun. Cool. Well, welcome to Nashville. And how much... How much debt have you two guys paid off? 288000 Love yeah. it. How long did that take? About 10 years. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Um, we started out at about 100 um, and we're at 160 this year. All Good right. for you. What do you guys do for a living? I'm a nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. And I'm a psychotherapist. Ah, in private ah. practice. Very cool. cool. Very cool. And 10 years, 288000 Is that your house? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Looking at weird people. <laughs> Knocked out the big dog. What's the house worth? About 240. About 240. Okay. So the 288 included more than just the house. Okay, yeah. we'll come back to that. And how much is in your nest egg? About 1.4 million. Nice. Uh, eight meeting come millionaire. <laughs> Look at you, baby step millionaire. <laughs> yes, indeed. You said it with such a straight face, too. <laughs> oh, she's, she's very calculated. She's been calculating. Uh-huh. Yeah, Grant, he's dancing around, yeah. but she's been calculating. All right. Uh-huh. Very yeah. awesome. Man. Yeah. Way to go, guys. She's it's a free a spirit with a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, how much of this money did y'all inherit, by the way? None. None. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're worth one point four million. Mm-hmm. No, plus the house. Mm-hmm. Or that's well, that, a total. Well, that's a total. Total nice. net worth including the house. All right, very good. So uh what was the rest of the debt? We had hundred and sixty eight thousand in consumer debt, about a hundred and ten of it was um the house. Your student loan first. Yeah, our mm-hmm. student loans and then a lot of stupid with credit mm-hmm. cards and cars and mm-hmm. Yeah, we've all done stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what keeps me in business. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you guys, you're fun. All right. So what started this whole journey and how did you get connected to this Ramsey stuff a decade ago? Well, we went, we were at church and in the bulletin it said Financial Peace University. And so I thought, because our church's name is Peace, I thought it was the pastor offering it. Mm-hmm. So we went over there and it was, you jumped out on stage on the videos. <laughs> like, this is not what I thought it was. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I went in kicking and screaming. You oh, know, did you? Your line of, you know, I saw the heel marks in the parking lot. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> All right. Guy's going to be a stuffed shirt sitting in front of a wall of law books or something like that, you know, suit and tie. And when you came out in jeans and a shirt, and I was like, okay, this might be okay. Ah, okay. I like this guy. All right. All right. Well, I used to come out stuffed shirt, but I learned the lesson over the years that it's not very relatable. So uh, <laughs> I, qu- I quit doing the stuffed shirt thing. I didn't like it anyway. So, yeah. All right. So how far into the lessons, Grant? I mean, what lesson were you on? You went, I think this is going to be okay. Because it wasn't just the jeans at the front. I mean, come on. You, you still were sitting there with your arms crossed. But what, what the first lesson get you or did a couple more in or what? Absolutely. I remember tearing up when I saw the uh, the gazelle. You know, you got to run. You got to mm. run. You know, and just that feeling of that's that's what it takes. You know, mm. you, you are literally mm-hmm. running for your life. Yeah. And when that hit, when we had all this student loan debt, we both have graduate degrees, and uh, you know. That, that was when it really got real. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're in the psychology world. I mean, the, the psychi- uh, what, I mean, psychotherapy, you know that transformation does not occur without a visceral experience. True. Yeah. It require, it, it's, it's not an intellectual, I think I want to transform. No, I mean, you got, there's stuff has to break. You know, mm-hmm. and you see it all the time, I'm sure, in your in your practice. So, but you guys did it. I'm so proud of y'all. Thank you. Way to go, heroes! Yes, How I feel so. to have no debt of any kind. It's phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I love it. So, what was oh. your first? What was your first act after paying off the mortgage? After doing it, what what did you do to celebrate? What was that moment? 
We're here. <laughs> this is it. This is pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Now you yeah. got to upgrade. What yeah. are you going to do? What are you going to do that's cool now? Well, now we have a whole bucket list going. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. What's the first thing on the bucket list? I would love to do an Alaskan cruise. Ooh, oh, yes, ma'am. We got some Alaska people sitting here. Yeah. Yes. Well, they'll tell you. I've that's done a great. couple of them, and uh, I'll tell you, put the train ride over to Denali and hang out at Denali a couple days yeah. and go up on the glaciers. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. even better than the cruising. Love did, it. We did that on our last one. It's a little expensive, but you got the money. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's Ooh, I'm excited. That's fun. Very cool. Very cool. I don't think they call it Denali. I don't Anyway, I don't forget. But yeah, it's do whatever. It. It's, I, I can't keep that stuff straight. But way to go, guys. Way to go. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I mean, you kept at this 10 years. You did this the appropriate way. Yeah. The first four were really intense. Mm-hmm. And then, like you say, we went intentional with investing and paying off the house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's the keys to getting out of debt? planning mm. talking mm. to each other have to be on the same team mm. yeah. yeah it's our money mm-hmm. and That's going through word. financial peace university made you get that connected up then yeah and, and then we facilitating it a, a more than a dozen times oh uh, wow I yeah, did you it. can't wow, you not do it if out. you're the facilitator <laughs> <laughs> i did i brought it into my practice one time and made the mistake of putting it on facebook and stuff like that we had people on the stairway we had, wow. we had to bring in extra chairs and stuff like that so it's like oh maybe we probably should find a bigger venue to do this <laughs> if we're going to do this like this again wow, wow. very and, cool that's very cool and when you coordinate it it's motivating for you as well right i mean there's oh. something about that Absolutely. Yeah. It really reminds you of all the details that are important. Yeah. And every time you come back to host a new class, you're further ahead, too. So it's like you get to see your progress over and over. Yeah. That's wonderful. So good, guys. Way to go. Seeing that light bulb come on for people when they're like, "Ooh, I can do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who was cheering you on outside the two of you? Mm-hmm. Lots of family and friends uh, mm-hmm. were a little bit naysayers, but they like, you know, once she sets her mind to anything, she's going to do it. So <laughs> yeah. they, they knew uh, I didn't have a choice. They're like, watch, <laughs> watch, watch Christine's dust. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. Exactly. And our yeah. grandson, Gavin, uh, when we would be driving him around to get him to take a nap, he's in the back seat, out cold. And at the end of the death free scream, you'd see him come alive from the back seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so just remembering that's that face on a two-year-old <laughs> that's so perfect oh that's great way to go you guys yeah. hey we've got the live and give box for you it's got the baby awesome. steps millionaires book in it uh which you guys are there way to go ding ding baby steps millionaires i love it Sweet. and of course the uh, total money makeover book as well you'll be able to give that to one of the folks that needs some help that you'll run into mm-hmm. and a financial peace university membership also something you'll probably give away i suspect but that's the live and give box and uh, our way of saying thanks and uh, and saying we're proud of you Mm -hmm. very cool look at you man you just did it you just did it that's so fun how old are you two i will be 65 next summer all right and she's not (laughs) okay (laughs) that's a great answer (laughs) she's not even 60 yet so that's a great answer well played well played you got me out of that grant and christine st louis missouri 288,000 paid off in 10 years making 100 to 160 baby step millionaire in it did it baby count it down let's hear a debt free scream go ahead three two one we're debt free how that happened i just (laughs) saw it love it wow i love that story this is the ramsey show
Our scripture of the day, Isaiah 58, 11, the Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Mary Kay Ash says, for every failure, there's an alternative course of action. You just have to find it. When you come to a roadblock, take a detour. I'm in. Uh, Angelo is with us in Fairbanks, Alaska. Hi, Angelo. How are you? I'm doing great. How are y'all doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up in your world? Uh, I'm calling because me and my wife have a question for y'all. Uh, I'm 20. She's 21. We both work full time. We've been wanting to have kids for a while now. It's something we're super excited to. We're super excited to be parents. How old are you? Uh, I'm 20, and she's 21. Okay. But I've been having some concerns about it because I realize that having two full-time incomes right now is pretty sweet, and it makes paying the bills a lot easier. Uh, once we have a kid, if she we agreed she'd be a stay-at-home mom, and it is something we could definitely afford, no problem. But I'm concerned because it would slow down some of our financial goals that we want to do. Great uh, trade. Example. Make the trade. Make the trade. Best thing on the planet is babies. Okay, we, so we've just been worried because I know it's kind of weird for people this young to be excited about having kids. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. don't know who you're running around with, but <laughs> uh, I mean. I mean, your life is going to look different, and that's okay. And, I mean, she's going right. to be at home. You're going to go down income. You've done the math. You've looked at it. I think that maybe more so than the numbers, I think you're getting your head around how your life in general is going to look and how things do your slow wife down. Had, if your wife had a baby and she's 21 or 22 years old, she's going to be the youngest room mother over at the elementary school, the coolest <laughs> youngest room mother ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And the others will be a decade older than her. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, have at it. I mean, you do whatever you want to do, dude, but I'm just telling you, uh, if you're going to trade money for something, the best thing you trade money for is babies. Mm -hmm. It is okay, a trade. So maybe I just it been, is a trade. I've been overanalyzing it, I guess, now. No, you're not overanalyzing uh, it. You're just analyzing mm -hmm. it. But I'm just telling you, right. it's it's a value-based judgment is what it is. On one side of the scales, baby. Other side of the scales, some money. Yeah. Which one tips one the scales? Of, baby. And also, I mean, I mean, we have a bunch of positives that come out of it from it, too. Uh, like my wife, she's going to college right now. And she'd be able to, you know, do more college work and get her degree faster so she could boost her income once she does come back to work. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What do you make? Uh, so I'm active duty Air Force. Uh, so my pay is a little weird. After my housing allowance and my food and all that good stuff is taken out my retirement, I make 1500 a paycheck. Yeah, but the, all that other stuff's worth another couple thousand, right? I, I think if you include all that, it comes out to like 60K, something yeah. like that. That's good. Thanks for your service. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank you, for saying that. you know, it's up to you. you there's no hard, there. You did nothing wrong if you said we want to stack cash yeah. high before babies, but you did nothing wrong if you said we want to start our family while we're young, mm -hmm. er, and uh, we're going to stack cash a little more slowly because babies are here. There is nothing wrong with either one of those answers. Nothing improper. It is a value-based decision. Absolutely. And um, I just, as we look back, the best things we ever did were babies. The next, or, or actually the best thing was, if I'd have known how great grandkids were going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they, that's, uh, grandbabies are the best because if one of them is broken, you just hand it back. <laughs> this one's apparently broken. It smells. You, you need to take this one, you know. So, uh, yeah. I, I don't know what to do with that. I, that's a, that looks like, it looks like Rachel needs to fix that. So That's a good discussion because it, it is very based on your values. It's based on what you want to do as a couple because Sam and I – we had so much debt. It was like we couldn't fathom starting a family in that place. So we were yeah, like. Yeah, you waited until you, you, you got out for your kids, didn't We you? were married 10 years before we had kids. Okay. Yeah. But, Paid off all our debt first. But that's not to say that somebody else would ever have to think to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's the, really, he's not in debt. He's just saying yeah. I'm going to take less wealth. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to have less income. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little different than. A little different. Well, it weighs heavier on you, I think. The debt does. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I'm going to get wealthy slower is different than I'm overwhelmed with debt. Right. Yeah. Not to, but I mean, you could be a couple and you're in whatever amount of debt and you could still choose to have kids. Yeah. Yeah. You but, could. You could. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, that's my point. There's not a wrong not a choice. Wrong it's like never have children. Always have ch- no. I, it's <laughs> that, neither one. Neither one. Right. But uh, it's just my personal experiences. Um, the, the the best thing I've ever done. I've done a lot of fun stuff in mm-hmm. my life. Done a lot of stuff of note. But uh, uh, the three Ramsey kids are the best things I've ever done. I feel that. So I second that sentiment. There we go. All right, Lee is in Lubbock, Texas. What's up, Lee? Hey, you doing well? How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Okay, so my wife and I, we are we're getting ready to pay our house off in the next couple months. Um, I make base salary sixty thousand. She makes fifty. Um, but then at the end of every year, my bonus will be anywhere from a hundred to a hundred and thirty thousand. And so, what we're wanting to try to figure out how to do is now that we're getting ready to pay our house off. Um, we want to start trying to max out our 401ks and Roth IRAs. But once we, if we were to completely max our 401ks and our IRAs out, um, that would leave it a very slim margin to live off of before the bonus comes in. And I'm just kind of wondering your advice. Do it out of the bonus. Yeah. Can you lump sum it out of the, at the oh, end of no, the year? No, 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 no. The 401k is a, is a payroll withheld and you don't own the company, right? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so I can't, my bonus pay can't go towards the 401k, I guess. And no, it I can, did. but it would just be late in the year before it got there. You can have the same percentage of your bonus going in the 401k if you do the rest and add it up to where you get to the 19,000 or 28,000 or whatever it is right now. Oh. Yeah, your bonus, you can have for, bonus go to 401k. It just has to be payroll withheld. Okay. So I did not realize that. I talked to our payroll lady, and she um, made it sound like I couldn't do that. So, well, because okay. she doesn't know how to do it, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it definitely can be done because we do it here, so I know it can be done. Mm-hmm. You know, we have folks that, okay. that you know, they uh, – and what I do here in Ramsey, which is what I was leaning towards, but you can't do that, is um, I just load my 401k out of my first couple checks at, in January every year, and then I got – then I'm done for the year i max it out yeah what if what if you did that so when do you get the bonus well he can't because he can't control that like i can like how it's dispersed I, out i own it so i can make that happen he has to just take a percentage of his income putting into 401k it's the only way they'll do it and uh-huh. so it's the only way they're allowed to do it but I, I'm, I'm not doing anything illegal but i'm saying because i own it i can choose to fully fund mine early and quickly um and i've got the flexibility of you know, the accounting people like work for me and stuff. So that's, you know, that, that's, that changes the whole equation versus the payroll lady that doesn't even know how to do the deal. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think you're probably going to have to just figure out you got, you're making 200 and you want to put, uh, whatever your max is in and figure that out as a percentage of 200 and then just make that the percentage of your check. Okay. All the way through. And, and then of course we're making sure you got 22 fives, your max. So if you made two and a quarter, you put two percent, ten percent in. You follow me? Yes, I do. Yep. Yeah, but okay. you're gonna have to also make sure payroll lady gets this figured out because it'll screw it up if she screws it up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I will have to have a conversation with her. Okay. Yeah, yeah but you you can do that. It, it just you know you may have to do a little bit of uh, uh, research and bring her the actual documentation and showing her that not only can she do it, she actually has to do it if you ask her to. <laughs> there you okay. go. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's so terrible. that's the best play on it. Yeah, and then you can do that. Now, if you if it's Roth IRAs, you can just load you can load those on January first for the whole year, mm-hmm. um, and and you can load them on January first for the year before as that's well. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You can load the year before because as long as you file, as long before as you put April. the money in prior to filing the taxes for the year before. You can do that, and you can also go ahead and do the next year while you're at it mm-hmm. and just knock it all out and just max the thing up. That's what we do. Again, mm-hmm. we just January is just a big savings month for the Ramseys, mm-hmm. and that's cool. Good job, Jade. Well done. Well done, Booth boys. The men in the booth. The Booth dudes. Well played. <laughs> we'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. 
Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.